All right. Welcome, everybody, to Go In 5 Minutes, episode number 25. So we are going to continue the Buffalo series today, the series on the Go Buffalo Golang web framework. So this is episode number four in that series. And today we're going to talk about HTML templating. So this is a really important topic because this is the way to get your Buffalo code to show stuff on the screen. So obviously that's one of the most important things of a web framework to actually render something to your web app on the user's browser. Um, and we are going to use a templating engine that is not the HTML slash template library in the standard library of Go. We're going to use a plush, a templating language called Plush, which was originally built just for Buffalo, uh, but it is usable any, anywhere in any web app that you want. Um, but I'm going to show it today because it's really, really important to understand it if you're writing a Buffalo app. And it's really well sort of intertwined uh, with Buffalo if you choose to use it. So before we go and look at code, let's just look at the web page that we've built with the plush templating language. So I'm going to run my familiar Buffalo dev command. It's going to do its thing. And we are now live on localhost 3000. So we check it out. It's a basic web page. Uh, but the main functionality here is that we've got a form and I can write my name in the form and I press submit and now we've dynamically rendered my name in here. Okay, so we're going to go check out the HTML that made this happen with the plush template and then we're going to check out some Go code that we use to integrate those HTML templates in. Okay, so first things first, we have our templates inside of our templates directory. So that should be pretty easy to remember that. And we've got two files that we're going to pay attention to. The first one is sort of our skeleton. Application.html was configured in our Go code to be sort of the skeleton for any page that we decide to render, unless you opt out. Uh, so this is similar to a layout. Uh, if you're familiar with some other web frameworks out there that are outside of the Go ecosystem, the main thing to remember here is this yield. So yield is the plush keyword to uh, indicate to plush that we're going to substitute in a specific page uh, in instead of this line number 16. And that specific page is here in our, our index.html. So you can see some logic in here uh, that sort of kind of looks like Go code. And that's really the selling point of plush is that it looks like Go code, so you don't have to do so much context switching uh, from your Go to your uh, standard library Go templates. So all of the plush directives are in this uh, left caret and then percentage sign, and uh, then they all close out with percentage sign left caret, uh, right caret actually. So you can see sort of, uh, you can kind of follow what's going on here. There's an if, there's an else, uh, and the basic flow of this page are, um, if we have a name variable, so if our Go code has injected this name variable into our template, uh, we show this page. And if not, then we show that form that we had before when I first brought up the application. Okay, so let's look at how this sort of integrates with our Go code. So first things first is we need a type called a renderer uh, or a render type. So render is built uh, in this go buffalo slash buffalo slash render package. Uh, and the renderer implements, or excuse me, integrates really tightly with um, the plush templates. Okay. So the main thing here, the, the biggest feature of rendering is this layout. And we showed application.html. So this render type knows how to integrate with those layouts and specifically really knows how to deal with the yield keyword that we showed. Okay, so second thing is our routes. So we've got two routes. We have a get request to the root and we have a post request to the root as well. So the get request, first thing is the get request uses this context c.render and the context render function knows how to render HTML templates, specifically plush templates. When we call this r.html, 
R is that rendering engine we showed over here. And R is a global variable, so we can access it from any of our handlers. When we call r.html, that is the plush templating language going in and rendering index.html inside of that layout, the application.html layout. So the way the flow works is we've got our index.html. The first time it gets rendered, there's no name variable injected, so it renders the entire form. The form is rendered with this plush form helper, uh, which helps us build a form according to best practices. So things like cross-site request forgery prevention and other stuff like that. So it's really good for a Go developer like me because I'm not good at front-end development. And this kind of takes care of a lot of that for me. I can also use some helpers like building inputs, uh, form inputs. And this one is the form input for um, the name that I put in there and then I press submit. Okay, so once we do this, we render the form to the page and then when someone presses the submit button, it does a post request up to here and it gets handled by our home post handler, which was right below the home handler. The home post handler then pulls out the name from the post request and then does this c.set and c.set injects the name into the template context. Okay, so then when we do our c.render, if we head back to index.html, this time, because we've injected the name, we have it defined and we enter this if statement. And the final step then is when we render the header, this h3, we're able then to inject the name into that header and we end up with this, okay? So that's all we're gonna do for today regarding templates, but I really encourage you to go to gobuffalo.io, uh, click on front end here, and then click on templating here. And there's a world of more stuff you can do with Plush. It's actually a really, really powerful templating engine. So you can check out some of the screencasts, which go way further than this screencast. And they talk about all the various features. And you can go click on this link to github.com slash gobofalo slash plush. And it'll take you to the readme of plush. And you can check out all the powerful stuff it can do. There's ifs, there's really complicated Boolean logic you can do. There's data structures. You can loop over the data structures and, and there's even more than that. So really encourage you to check, check this out. Um, it's really easy to get started small and then sort of expand your knowledge and functionality using Plush. And in my opinion, this is a really great way to build complicated web apps using Buffalo. So that's it for today. I uh, hope to see you next time and take care, gophers.